Welcome back everyone, it's time for the Holy Paladin guide as many of you have requested. Since birth, as a lonely child, I dreamt of playing Holy Paladin and as soon as I reached the Age of Reason, patch 9.2 was announced. I mastered all of my energy and pressed change specialization from protection to holy and the grind began. The main reason I wanted to play Holy Paladin in this patch was the Necrolord Covenant, the double legendaries, the set bonuses and how all of them combined have a very strong synergy. So leaving jokes aside, I will talk about talents, PvP talents, legendaries, covenants, gameplay, ideal body temperature, and if you watch until the end, I will also cover stat priority. Now the main idea behind this guide is to stop wasting time and jump into the talent section. My default talent build looks like this. Bestow faith, saved by the light, fist of justice, unbreakable spirit, divine purpose, awakening and beacon of faith. There are of course variations, repentance and blinding light are perfectly viable options and should be picked according to the composition you're playing. Short example, if you have a lot of stuns in your team, you might not want or need fist of justice talent. Repentance has common diminishing returns with sap, polymorph, imprison, mortal coil and so on. Blinding light has common diminishing returns with blind fear, dragon's breath, psychic scream and so on. So just pick what's best for your team. For level uh, 35 tier you can and should pick cavalier if you need more mobility. Everything else should stay the same in my opinion. Next stop is PvP talents. Divine favor should be locked in and then lights grace, darkest before the dawn, blessed hands or ultimate sacrifice should be picked depending on team composition and arena bracket. Darkest before the dawn will give you even more healing output Blessed Hands is very strong into Warriors, Windwalker Monks and Assassination Robes. Ultimate Sacrifice is really good in 3v3 as it will give you an extra emergency button. Light's Grace looks solid in 2v2 as it allows you to easily build up holy powers when the enemy team has less pressure while also applying damage reduction. This will help you set up and be prepared for the next burst. Moving on to legendary powers and covenants, you probably know by now that most holy paladins have switched from Kyrian to Necrolord. This guide is honestly more rigid than the previous ones as it will mainly focus on Necrolord. However, I want to talk about the other covenants as well. Kyrian will be strong in RBGs and in certain 3v3 arena compositions as Divine Toll is in the end Arcane School and if you're constantly being interrupted or trained this can save either you or your teammates. Notable legendaries for Kyrian, obviously alongside Unity, are Marad's Dying Breath mostly for rated or random battlegrounds and Shock Barrier for either RBG or 3v3. Both these legendary powers have very good synergy with Divine Toll and the Divine Resonance provided by the Unity Legendary. Night Fae is also a niche covenant option in some 2v2 comps, maybe even some 3v3 comps, where your team tries to either one shot or do overwhelming damage to the enemy team. Blessing of Summer with Season of Plenty Covenant Legendary can dish out some insane amounts of damage. This can work for meme comps that include but not limited to a Convoke Balance Druid, an Assassination Rogue or a Marksmanship Hunter. Just imagine, if you haven't already seen this, a Convoke Balance Druid with Blessing of Summer and Aura Mastery or Blessing of Protection. They definitely have the element of surprise. Please don't play this. Now since we got that out of the way, Necrolord is next. Vanquisher's Hammer, Unity or Duty Bound Gavel, Shadowbreaker, Dawn of the Sun, Word of Glory, Light of Dawn, Mastery Lightbringer and of course the set bonuses. What's this? It's definitely not a cake recipe. All of these combined have probably one of the best synergy in the game. The healing potential behind one word of glory is beyond understanding, so let's explore this a little more. Basically, once you throw your vanquisher's hammer into someone's face, you get a two stack buff. Next, when you press word of glory, you will automatically also cast light of dawn. This light of dawn is on steroids. Shadow breaker will increase its range to 40 yards. First set bonus will increase its healing by 50% and cast a second time and Darkest Before the Dawn also increases its healing. After this, targets that were healed by Light of Dawn are affected by your mastery as if they are within 10 yards. 
So just in case you did not heal everyone to full or the burst is not over, your following heals will be even stronger. And also Shadow Breaker makes your Word of Glory receive 50% increased benefit from your mastery. You see, it's like a never ending story. Now, how do we make this as efficient as possible or how do we manage all of this? Don't randomly waste Vanquisher's hammer and in some situations you might want to refresh the buff. In 99.99 .99 situations, now this is not a Domestos commercial, your first global will be Vanquisher's hammer. You'll deal some damage, get one holy power, have the buff ready and expect some incoming damage. Keep in mind that recharge timer is 30 seconds and buff duration is 20 seconds. So not even in theory can you rotate this perfectly or maintain the buff forever. Ideally you must already have 3 holy powers or more. And now the main question is, when do we press Word of Glory? It's definitely not set in stone, but you want to use it when your teammate is as low as possible. This could either be 20% or 50%, it really depends on your comfort zone, if enemy still has some crowd control and so on. Another example is for instance when you get out of a crowd control. Is it better to already have the buff and the holy powers and just use word of glory to recover? Of course it is, but you won't always be able to if you mismanage your holy powers and your hammer buffs or charges. Bestow Faith, Hammer of Wrath, Holy Shock, Vanquisher's Hammer, all of these generate holy powers. So abuse them when possible and sit around 5 holy powers for as long as possible. Having 5 holy powers acts like a safety net when you need a lot of healing or dampening is high. Let's say you don't get a divine purpose proc. You have 2 hammer stack buffs and 5 holy powers. In this situation you can word of glory into a holy shock into another word of glory. In low dampening this may look overkill but at higher levels of dampening you will need this. Especially during enemy offensive cooldowns. Divine purpose will definitely help a lot but in the end it's an RNG talent. Speaking of dampening. In my opinion Holy Paladin is the best dampen healer right now, meaning that your healing throughput is still decent at let's say 50% dampening, at least when compared to other healers. I could talk about this a lot more and give you several other examples, but I don't want this guy to go into forever territory. For more gameplay you can watch some of my arena videos and see how I am not doing any of the previously mentioned here. Anyway, let's uh, talk about stat priority. I've seen a lot of Holy Paladins stack critical strike after versatility until now, however I am not going to do that. My theory craft says versatility is better than mastery, which is better than critical strike, which is better than haste. Still, you should get 3.55% haste for the 1.4 seconds global cooldown and after that get as much mastery and critical strike gear as you can. The main reason for mastery is how this stat works with shadow breaker legendary. Don't get me wrong, crit is still very good, however I want to stack mastery. That's it, we did it, guide complete. I really hope everything mentioned here was useful and will help you improve. Thank you very much for watching this far, if you have anything to add or if you have any questions or suggestions or maybe even ask me about that cake recipe, please use the commentary section below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, seriously you really have to click that. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.